Good evening, everybody. Orin J here with another Final Fantasy Brave Exvius War of the Visions Guild Wars video. Today we are doing another counter video, um, and today we are going to counter missile comps, specifically comps with two gunners. This was by far the most requested um, counter video for me to make, and so let's jump right in. Okay. If you remember last time, when we talked about countering a slashing team, one of my suggestions was to take their team and just build almost the same team, but with one counter matchup. Today, it's going to be a little different. A lot of people who are facing um, like a Frederica and a Lucia double gunner team don't necessarily have Frederica and Lucia to run themselves. So they need to figure out another way of dealing with this. Um, let's look at this a little bit detail. Uh, a lot of times you're seeing this in Guild Wars right now. Frederica, Lucia, and somebody else, maybe like an Engelbert here in slot 3. This is a pretty pretty strong comp. Um, this comp was stronger on the last Guild Wars map because of the range and it kind of let Engelbert move into position and get some taunting off, but it is still very viable on this map and it's still a comp you're going to run into a lot. So if we were going with my old strategy, we would do something like this. Take their two gunners run two gunners into it, and then look to counter here in slot three. Now, this is a problem because there's not enough gunners that you can really play around with your slot one and slot two here. You basically either have these two or you don't have these two and you need to find some way to deal with them. So we're going to try, we're gonna do some different things. Instead of just mirroring their comp and looking to counter in slot three, we are gonna build an entirely different comp built around countering Frederica Lucia plus somebody else. Okay, when I think of the solution to this problem, a lot of times I think of the unit Whisper. And so here we have Whisper's um, damage resists on the screen, and you'll see that she has 25% damage resist to every type of damage, and that's just her base without any gear or anything. So uh, you see a lot of people hating on this unit because she has low base HP, so she doesn't necessarily make a great tank. And if you're trying to just stack defense on Whisper, I agree. It doesn't make much sense to stack defense on this unit and expect her to tank. Her HP is too low to pull that off. When you're building Whisper, you want to focus on a specific damage type and use her 25% base to try and push that as high as you can. Um, you've seen a lot of videos in JP, if you've been watching, that will show Whispers with 99 or 100% slash resist that take one damage from any slash attack because they just mitigate everything else. So we're going to apply that same kind of thinking here, but on a broader scale. We're not going to focus just on Whisper. Now, if you have Whisper and you have her leveled, she would be great for this strategy, but you can use other units like, for example, these three. These three are the comp that I'm running in Guild Wars right now. Adelard, Victora, and Ramza. Now, if you look, Adelard is sitting at 25% missile resist, the same as Whisper. Victora is sitting at 20, almost there, and Ramza is sitting at 15. So I am running a support, a DPS, and a support. Like Ramza in the in my comp is the tank, but calling Ramza a tank is inappropriate. He's not a tank, but he does have high missile resist and he has a taunting spell. Okay, there are some other units to think about here, specifically these units. Um, Thancred and Engelbert both have 20% missile resist. And Murmur and um, Rain both have 15% missile resist. So taking these units and putting them in a composition is a really good starting point. But it's going to take more than just the units um, to counter this out. Let's go on. Next up is this card right here. Before I talk about this card, I will say that there is the... Um, the new, the Brave Exvius collab UR card that actually goes up to 20% missile resist, but it was a limited time vision card. And I'm not gonna make any of my builds based around limited time vision cards because those things are almost impossible to get and level unless you are just wailing. But we're gonna look instead at an MR vision card that uh, most people have and MR cards really aren't that hard to max out. So looking here, this is Shadowlink's card, and it gives the person wearing it luck plus 
and gives the whole group another 15% missile resist. So just with this card and those characters, you have people on your team pushing 40% missile resist, and we haven't even gotten into gear and espers yet. So already you can see that this, this feels doable. This feels like something that we could pull off. So let's go a little bit deeper into it. Okay, here's three espers that I think can work in this comp in some way. The first two on the left are Ifrit and Odin, both of which can get up to 15% missile resist. That's awesome. If we're already sitting at 45 or 40, these two, either one of them, would push a unit into the 50% of missile resist. So you're already mitigating half that damage. Now, I did put Golem on the right, and I will get to that later. But keep in mind that Golem can give a unit 15 more defense. So, okay, let's go on to the next thing, which is going to be gear. Typically, right now, excuse me, helmets are going to be the thing that give you missile resist. So I put two on the board. The, the Golden Helm, um, which there was an event, event for a while back, and I personally just had a ton of these recipes laying around, it gives 8% missile resist. Now, it can be hard to plus five a Golden Helm. It takes a lot of materials and a lot of recipes, and I understand that not everybody has access to that. But something like the Mithril Helm right below it, still gives 7% missile resist and 7 defense. That's pretty respectable and a very doable item to build and farm. So, if you combine gear, vision card, group buff from the vision card, and Esper with a unit that is already naturally resistant to missiles, you're talking 60 plus percent missile resist right off the bat. That's great. Okay. So, now let's put all that together into an actual group and see what it looks like. Now, there's going to be, I, I understand that there's going to be people who don't have Ifrit, um, Odin, and Golem all together in one package, and they don't have three golden helmets or something like that, and I'm right there with you. I only have one golden helmet maxed out. I still haven't pulled Odin. What am I going to do? Is this still doable? It absolutely is still doable because... You put it together with some thought. So if we look over here, um, Victoria is the person I gave the golden helm to. She has a base 20% missile resist already. And so I decided to just build on this. A lot of times what you want to do is build one stat harder than the others. So I picked missile resist for Victoria, even though everybody's getting it from here, everybody's getting 15 here, but I really wanted to push her um, mitigation towards missile resist. So I gave her the helmet, plus eight. I gave her Ifrit with plus 15. She gets a plus 15 here, plus her 20. She is gonna take a lot of shots to kill. Ramza, I'm going to try to have run as tank in this group. I gave him Valve Love to get a little extra hate. He's running Spellblade, so he'll use Taunting Spell. But because I didn't have more Missile Resist to give him, I was like, he already has 15 base. He's getting another 15 here. That's respectable. I'm going to build defense on him. I'm going to rely on stacking defense from a golden armor. You could also use a plate armor here. Stacking defense from Golem. And then layering that with his Missile Resist from this source and this source. And see if I can let him survive a little bit. To help him survive, I'm bringing in a healer who can cast Protect. That's Adelard here. Adelard is getting no missile resist from his gear. He's getting the 15 here, but he has a base 25, which is really high. Now, uh, obviously you could sub Adelard out for a uh, Murmur if you don't have Adelard. You could also sub him out for Ayaka, but you gotta watch out with her a little bit more. She might die from a few missile attacks. Um, but that's my thought. The thought is it's going to be hard to kill Victoria and she's going to get in there and, you know, jump on people. Rams is going to be able to tank for a while with Adelard supporting him and no one is going to get one shot. The important thing in Guild Wars is living through some turns, especially on this new map where you basically spend the whole first turn buffing and moving into position and then you spend the second turn starting to hurt people. That second turn is going to use a lot of characters AP up. They're going to be out of AP. And if you can survive that initial hit, 
and heal that back up, you will be um, in a good place to kill some missile units because they're pretty explodable if you have a Victoria jumping on them. So we're going to look at my Guild Wars from today and see how this worked out. Okay, let's see how our plan works out. If things go as planned, my team should spend their first turn buffing, Ramza should move in with his defense and missile resist and get a protect from Adelard, and Victoria should go around the side and start jumping on people. So there we go, Ramza took his first shot. Now we're gonna get to see his health in a minute. He's taken two sharpshoots and he survived with about 30% health left. That's pretty good. Adelard cures him back up. Ramza takes a double shot. So Ramza has already taken three AP abilities from the enemy team. And I think he took a Ultima here as well. Did he take an Ultima from Ramza as well? He did. So he's taken three AP abilities plus Ramza's limit break and he lived. So he barely lived, barely has anything left. But because of his build, he was able to survive all that. So let's keep it rolling. Uh, there we go, Victoria killing the gunners because that's what Victoria does. Ramza did finally fall to a shot. Um, but he definitely did his job. He got in there and tanked a ton. That team was very fast. They had a lot of agility. I would not be surprised if they were running like the Final Fantasy Tactics agility card or something like that. They moved a lot. Um, but my non-tank Ramza, Ramza's not a tank, I just run him as one, survived all that and did that kind of work. Okay, let's watch this fight. This is Lucia Engelbert Ayaka versus my Victoria and Adelard that I have left. When I went into this fight, my thought was Lucia will have a hard time chewing through my people and I can make them use some abilities, um, use up a lot of Ayaka's TP, maybe a full life or something. Now, what ends up happening here is surprising actually. You'll see in a minute, Victoria's gonna walk up and use her limit break right here and actually kill Ayaka and charm Engelbert and then Adelard finishes him off. So that's kind of nuts, um, and we're actually gonna win this fight. But if you notice, it's still a good, um, even though I kind of, like Victoria kind of clutched this, Lucia here had a really hard time hurting my team. This team was still only running one source of damage, plus a tank and a healer. And this comp, even though it is built to counter two gunners and a person supporting those gunners, it's also very useful for countering any comp that only has one type of damage source and that damage source is gunners. All right, so we saw what happened there and I would say this experiment worked very well. Actually, this is the second day in a row I've been able to find teams with only one type of damage and that damage was missile. And I ran this same team both times into that on this new map and both days I got six stars. Um, we're competing in Platinum 2, so there's really not a lot of, like, scrub teams up here. So I think my squad's performing really well. You're not always going to get the clutch Victora double kill limit break. Um, that's the first time I've ever seen her use her limit break in Guild Wars. But you do see that you can build to mitigate one type of damage. And with the amount of double gunner teams or single gunner teams running a tank and a support that are out there... I think a build like this is really viable, and I think with um, the wide variety of characters and gear that you can find to build this team, I think it's fairly accessible. So I hope this video was a help for you guys. I hope um, you can build some anti-missile teams and stomp those uh, double gunner meta slaves out there. Stomp them right into the ground. Alright everybody, thanks for watching and have a great evening.